deal with today's problems, the G20 almost needs to become an M20. You know, the idea of bringing together governments to solve uh, issues by themselves made sense in the past when many of the key problems actually were caused by governments. So setting up of a Security Council at the United Nations after World War II to deal with conflict made sense. Governments cause wars, governments can stop wars. When we look at the challenges today, governments don't start food security issues, climate change concerns, or even unemployment issues, and they certainly can't solve them by themselves. So we actually need to have a global gathering that certainly has governments at the focal point, but includes all these other key stakeholders, the private sector, civil society, and other groups that can really help collectively come up with the right solutions. Such a process uh, might be quite different than the G20 process today. Today, uh, each country in turn takes on the responsibilities, but it's almost a 12-month stop and go. There's no permanent secretariat. The focus is on intergovernmental and interdepartmental negotiations and discussions. Very little room to actually incorporate civil society uh, or the private sector in a structured way. Therefore, an approach going forward would focus more on what are the key issues, have continuity on dealing with those issues, whether it's on food security or, or anti-corruption or green growth over a number of years, and it would ensure that while governments are involved, other key stakeholders are involved in an ongoing process. Finally, that approach would actually ensure that there were some real markers of progress, and everybody, governments but other stakeholders, should be held accountable to see that there's actually real movement from year to year. The B20 process brings together leading companies from around the world uh, to provide advice uh, to the G20 on a number of issues. In the past, it used to be a, a fairly pro forma uh, consultation right at the beginning of a G20 meeting with very little real input. That's changed significantly over the last uh, year in particular. This year, there were uh, just a few topics, uh, many of which had been continued from conversations in the previous year. This year, instead of just having CEOs providing a business perspective, key civil society actors such as uh, Oxfam, such as Transparency International, and international organizations such as the OECD were full members of the task forces to provide more uh, balanced and complete views. And perhaps even more importantly, the recommendations were provided to governments months before the G20, and there were key meetings with the right ministers and the right departments to actually help fashion not just general recommendations, but specific actions. And I think the last point that people will see at Los Cabos is the private sector is not only suggesting what governments should do, they're coming up with actions they will be doing themselves. Whether it's food security, dealing with corruption, or dealing with youth unemployment, uh, business is also coming forward with very concrete actions they'll be taking themselves. If we look at unemployment, there'll be a strong commitment to significantly increase the number of apprenticeships in companies and also to improve the link between companies and colleges, thereby ensuring that there's better education for employment and then also through the apprenticeships, employment that in a sense is also a form of applied education. So business will not just be there as, as a lobbyist, they'll be there as stakeholders and corporate global citizens really trying to come up with ways to improve the state of the world.